All right, guys, welcome in to my official college football week number 13 upset alert predictions where I put certain teams on upset alert. And guys, I do have to talk about the Ohio State-Michigan game. Of course, the most important game of the weekend. We received some pretty remarkable news yesterday when the forecast just completely turned. And unfortunately for Michigan, it is going to be Absolutely beautiful tomorrow, 55 degrees right at kickoff, perfectly sunny. And guys, I'm starting to get more and more confidence for Ohio State to beat Michigan. This game is a little bit harder to predict based off of how both teams have been playing. Certainly, you can say they both looked ahead. Their games last week were not good versus Illinois and at Maryland. But either way, guys, it sets up a very, uh, you know, what's going to happen with Blake Corum? I think that's what everyone's reading into. And if Blake Corum doesn't play much and Michigan loses to Ohio State, we know that's going to set up for a potential excuse for Michigan to maybe still slide into the playoff. That brings into the whole conference, uh, non-conference schedule issue with Michigan. When it comes down to this game in specific, it's going to be one on the line of scrimmage. Ohio State, I have not been impressed, uh, you know, with their running offense, get, you know, with their rushing offense. Uh, but I think Trevion Henderson, there's no sense in playing him. He's clearly injured. You know, you give the kid credit for trying to, to gut it out. But at some point, if you are a coach, you got to tell him, listen, you're hurting our team. We need Dallin Hayden out there. He needs to get the majority of the reps. Mayan Williams, we'll see if he's 100%. And then, of course, with Michigan, their defensive line is going to have to generate significant pressure against C.J. Stroud. And that's actually one of Ohio State's strengths is their uh, pass blocking, their offensive line pass blocking. They don't get a ton of push when it comes to the run game, especially on third and fourth and short. And if you're Michigan, I think that has to be one of the huge things you emphasize. Make, force Ohio State to convert those third and shorts because right now that's a major issue for the Buckeyes. They get no push on a third and one, on a fourth and one, and they get stuffed more times than not. But overall, with the Blake Corum injury, with the skill advantage for Ohio State, with Ryan Day understanding he needs to win this football game. There are no excuses. It's 55 degrees. It's perfectly sunny. It's about three mile per hour winds. Ohio State, after their loss last year, they're going to be very you know, you know, motivated to come out and really uh, trounce Michigan. And I think Michigan hangs in there in the first half and it ends up 34-17. to 17. The line in this game is shifting slightly towards Ohio State. It, it was stuck at 7.5. It's down to 8. Uh, but I do have Ohio State winning. I just think it sets up so great. The weather, the situation, the fact that they can pass block um, that is one of the things that they can do and give C.J. Strout time in the pocket to throw. Of course, they are starting to miss JSN. The, the receivers outside of Marvin Harrison Jr., they've been a little underwhelming the past few weeks. Julian Fleming, the drop issues. Mecca Abuka kind of struggling to get open. But I still like Ohio State to win this game fairly easily. The next potential upset, it's got to be Oregon at Oregon State. And, and guys, I do have Oregon winning this game. I think they hold off the potential upset here in in this one, mainly because Oregon knows what's at stake right now. This is a huge game, and, and there is speculation that I'm putting onto this game of a potential injury to Bo Nix. How severe is that? How is that going to affect him? We really don't know, but I just think there's a situation where Oregon, if they win this game and then they beat USC, they are going to the Rose Bowl. They are going to be ranked as the number one team in the Pac-12. It's a huge opportunity. Oregon State is certainly a good team, but I'm looking at a major quarterback discrepancy based on Bo Nix. Of course, I am speculating. We're hoping he's at least 80 to 90% healthy against whoever Oregon State starts. They've had major issues with their quarterbacks. They've had to change a few quarterbacks, uh, and they've had a nice few weeks. They had a good win last week, but I will take Oregon on the road because they're going to be focused, and they have the overall talent advantage in that one. Next, we have Iowa State and TCU. A lot of people kind of surprised by this. A lot of people think TCU is going to trounce Iowa State. I think it's going to be harder for TCU, guys. T or Iowa State has a very good defense. They've got the best defense in the Big 12, 
and you look at their record at 4-7, and seven, the remarkable thing about Iowa State, they're actually a top 30 team according to ESPN FBI. Now, you can say FBI is fraudulent, it's dumb, but that just shows you if you're 4-7 and seven and you're ranked inside the top 30, you've had a lot of very close losses, and TCU's had a lot of very close wins, and you pair those two things together, and we've probably got a close game here if we're doing our calculations correctly. So I think TCU wins this game. They enter the Big 12 championship game against Kansas State undefeated and right in line to be a possible number three or number four seed. They're probably going to move to number three uh, and in front of the Ohio State-Michigan loser after this week, as long as they beat Iowa State. But I do like Iowa State, uh, you know, plus the 10.5 to keep this game close, personally. Uh, could TCU possibly get upset? I certainly have seen crazier things. I think TCU is just playing with fire every week this year, and normally you end up getting burned. Now, TCU has been able to survive, and they are sitting one game away, but it is a situation where Iowa State, they need something into their program. They need an injection of life, and you're talking about really not a huge talent advantage for TCU. TCU's already locked up a spot in the Big 12 championship, maybe looking ahead here. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how Iowa State comes out tomorrow. Next, we have Tennessee and Vanderbilt, and I love Vanderbilt, guys. This line, I think, is down to 14. I love Vanderbilt to cover this spread. It is just the perfect situation for Vandy. I could see them upsetting Tennessee. I'm going to give Tennessee the win in this one. But another close storyline to keep our eyes on when it comes to this game in particular, I really think the playoff, or excuse me, the New Year's Six Bowl situation wants Tennessee to lose this game. They want no part of Tennessee in a New Year's Six Bowl with Joe Milton as the starting quarterback after the season-ending injury to Hendon Hooker, and also Tennessee has a horrifically bad defense, and you've also got to remember this Vanderbilt team, they've got significant momentum, they've won two SEC games in a row, they're at home, they've been able to score Tennessee has a horrible defense. We could see Vanderbilt putting up 30, 33 points, something like that, and possibly upsetting Tennessee. I gave Tennessee the win because I, I, I do credit Tennessee with a very nice season. And I, I don't want to disrespect them. And, and Joe Milton definitely has a cannon. He can throw. They've got receivers. But guys, I think Vanderbilt plus 14 is stealing in this game. Tennessee, they've, you know, after that week, you know, that crazy loss last week to South Carolina, they, they lose their quarterback. They're on the road now. They're going to be so down. They're so down in this game. They're going to be very sad. I think they win, but it's close. LSU and Texas A&M. I just threw this one on here because it would be amazing. I think we all have to root for this. We have got to root for Texas A&M, and they can honestly win this game. Like, we've got to root for them. It would be so hilarious to see LSU go to the SEC Championship after losing to Texas A&M with three losses and CBS gets screwed because the SEC Championship is completely meaningless. We all know what's going to happen if LSU beats uh, you know, Texas A&M, CBS is going to run with the narrative. If LSU beats Georgia somehow, they're in the playoffs as a, as a two-loss team. I just think it would be great if that game was completely meaningless. It, remi it would remind me of Missouri, you know, back in 2014 or whenever it was making the SEC championship from the East, and it's just completely meaningless. So this would be hilarious if A&M is able to get this upset. I don't buy LSU. LSU, I think it was ridiculous that LSU was ranked in front of USC when you're talking about a team that suffered like a 35-point home loss. Uh, LSU, really uh, not great. And I have them winning this game, but certainly not covering the spread. Uh, the next game is Notre Dame at USC. And guys, I really like Notre Dame to win this football game. With USC, it's been a very fortunate season for them. Notre Dame... I know I always stress on their defense, but one of the interesting trends I've seen with Notre Dame, their offense and their running game is really starting to come on. You pair that with a bad USC defense. I like Notre Dame keeping this game close, keeping it controllable, keep it lower scoring, and then grinding out a win in the second half against a USC team that probably should have two or three losses this year if it wasn't for such great you know, turnover luck and things like that. And we've seen this USC offense earlier this year struggle in games to put up 20 points. 
Um, of course, recently, we've got the Caleb Williams type, things like that. People don't want to hear it, but they have struggled before. So guys, I like Notre Dame to win this game outright. It would be a huge road win. There is such a motivation for Notre Dame to get this win, become possibly a top 10, top 12 ranked team, go into the offseason with just a massive amount of recruiting momentum. And Marcus Freeman's first year, which was originally thought to be a flop after the losses to Ohio State, Marshall, and Stanford, is starting to really turn around. And if they won this game and used their defense, Marcus Freeman, the way he can recruit right now, it's crazy. It would be unbelievable for Notre Dame. And then we do have Washington at Washington State. And guys, I do like Washington State. I have to pick the upset here in one of these games. My prediction is at least, you know, either Washington State, Washington, or Oregon State, Oregon. One of those games is going to be an upset. I think it's this one. Washington's defense is terrible. Washington State has a good enough offense. Uh, to really do some things. I'm expecting a higher scoring game and a fun one and maybe a walk-off field goal in this in-state rivalry. Just a little fun game here. Really, it just comes down to me not tr trusting Washington's defense on the road, coupled with the fact that Washington State really has been solid this year. They've been a consistently good team. They've beaten the teams they've supposed to beat. And, and this is the situation with their fans at home. They're going to be revved up. They're going to be Really wild. I like them plus two to win this game outright. So guys, those are my week number 13 upset picks and predictions. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.